There's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt right now about how BlackRock can change Bitcoin's supply. And all of this was a result of a video that BlackRock put out advertising their Bitcoin ETFs and basically pushing for Bitcoin adoption. Let's look at the video. We've all heard about Bitcoin, but what exactly is Bitcoin? Let's start at the beginning, around 100,000 years ago. Throughout history, we've used all kinds of objects to help make transactions and store value. From seashells, to shiny metals, to paper notes. That's because the value isn't just in the object itself, it's in how much we agree the object represents. So the object can be many things, even, as it turns out, a string of digital code. The internet changed everything. It connected the world, changing how we communicate, work, shop, and manage finances. It also opened the door to a new kind of currency and asset. Enter Bitcoin, a digital currency not governed by banks or governments, but by its global community of users. And that provided new potential benefits. Bitcoin exchanges happen person to person, anywhere in the world, in near real time and for near zero transaction costs, saving money, time, and opening financial opportunity to those without access to a banking system. Bitcoin has a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoins. This hard-coded rule controls supply, purchasing power, and helps avoid the potential misuse of printing more and more currency, which can contribute towards inflation. All transactions take place on a digital ledger called the blockchain. It's a digital platform to move value where everyone can see every transaction. Bitcoin is no longer seen as the radical idea it was 15 years ago. Over 500 million people around the world now use cryptocurrency, with over 50% holding or investing in Bitcoin, making it the most popular cryptocurrency by far. Some use Bitcoin to transfer value across borders and for purchases. Some see Bitcoin as an investment, given its limited supply and uniqueness relative to other financial assets. And for those in certain countries, its value goes far deeper, potentially offering greater financial autonomy by serving as an alternative to local currencies. Bitcoin is an emerging global monetary alternative. Time will tell how far adoption will go. But next time you see a seashell or shiny metal, think about how humans' idea of money has evolved throughout history. I actually think that was a really great video. I think that explained Bitcoin's point really well, but there was one part in that video that really scared people. And this is the part right here. This actually freaked a lot of people out. There's no guarantee that Bitcoin's 21 million supply cap cannot be changed, will not be changed. And I think that people kind of misunderstood this. They misunderstood that this is something that lawyers probably require BlackRock to put in their ad. They're not doing it because they want to increase the supply of Bitcoin. They're doing it because they have to, to make sure that they abide by regulations. This doesn't mean that BlackRock is going to create a fork and change the supply. Okay, so let's take a look at what people were saying. A lot of people were really worried. So, hey, BTC Maxi, do you understand? Or shall I draw a little picture? BlackRock and M. Sailor say that. There is no guarantee that Bitcoin's 21 million supply cap will not be changed. Uh, they left a screenshot here. And Michael Saylor actually tweeted this. The fine print at the 141 mark, there is no guarantee that Bitcoin's 21 million supply cap will not change. While the voiceover says this hard-coded rule uh, controls supply, a BlackRock. I mean, there's a lot of just fear, people worried, people scared, thinking, oh, um, Bitcoin is the supply cap is going to increase somehow. Somehow BlackRock is going to create a fork and they're going to increase the supply. So let's like, let's take a look at some other forks that were created in the past and then compare their prices to Bitcoin. So we can see here, this is one BSV. So Craig Wright, from what I know, Craig Wright is the one who created this and it's failed miserably. So at one point, 
one BSV token was equal to 3% of one BTC. Today, it's equivalent to, uh, let's see, 0 0.0006 BTC. So 0 0.02 here, 0 0.03. Here, it's 0 0.0006. So it's lost a ton of value. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. You can see here, B. CH, Bitcoin Cash. This one started at 0 0.2 Bitcoin. So it was worth 20% of a Bitcoin. Now it's worth 0.4% of a Bitcoin. 0 0.004681 Bitcoin. Honestly, all forks are going to fail because people don't want forks. They want BTC. They want BTC because of certain uh certain criteria that bitcoin has certain characteristics that bitcoin has and no other altcoin can have so for example bitcoin has no founder btc bitcoin has no ruling foundation no pre-mine no insiders initial investors office website paid executive team marketing team paid dev team starting price human controlling it and it's the fairest money on earth then we have all of these characteristics so bitcoin Limited supply, decentralized, clear monetary policy, open and permissionless, unconfiscatable, privacy conscious, censorship resistant. So if BlackRock were to create their own coin, they would very likely be changing something here. And now think of this logically. Just think of, think of this from the perspective of BlackRock. Why would BlackRock want to increase the supply of Bitcoin? Their clients buy Bitcoin and pay BlackRock a fee for holding BTC for them. Think of it logically. If BlackRock were to increase the supply, that would make it so that there's no longer 21 million Bitcoin. There's more supply out there. That means that any supply that BlackRock holds on behalf of their clients decreases in value, meaning they, own, they, they earn less in fees. Do you really think that BlackRock is that stupid? Okay, now let's let's look at it from another another angle. Michael Saylor. People think, oh, Michael Saylor and BlackRock are colluding to increase Bitcoin supply. Now think of it, Michael Saylor. His company is built on owning four hundred and forty thousand BTC out of 21 million. So he owns 2% of the total supply. And that's something that he talks about regularly. He says, we own this much. We're, going to, we're planning to own this much. We plan to continue owning more. Why would he want the supply to increase? Some people just say the dumbest things possible. And people fall for it. It's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. BlackRock and Michael Saylor say that there's no guarantee that Bitcoin's 21 million supply cap will not be changed. That it just doesn't even make, it doesn't even make any sense. But we're also thinking of it the wrong way. BlackRock owns 500,000 Bitcoin. MicroStrategy owns 430,000 Bitcoin. Those two entities alone own almost 4% of the supply, let's say. 4%, maybe 5% of the supply. What about the rest of the world? What about everybody else who owns Bitcoin? What about all the other people who don't want Bitcoin supply to go up? Do you think that because BlackRock and Michael Saylor own 5% of the supply, they can change the supply cap? No. This is based on consensus. It's based on everybody voting on a change. This would directly impact BlackRock's bottom line. It would directly impact Michael Saylor's bottom line. He owns Bitcoin of his own. I bet you Larry Fink owns Bitcoin of his own. Why would they want to increase the supply? It, it just, sometimes, sometimes people just say the dumbest stuff online and, and everybody just falls for it. Okay, so let's look, at, let's look at what the Bitcoin protocol is. The Bitcoin protocol is a set of rules that govern the functioning of Bitcoin. Its key components and principles are a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network with no central oversight. No central oversight. That's the key. That's the point of Bitcoin. If BlackRock were to create a fork, they're probably going to have some kind of oversight in that case. They're going to make it so that they have some kind of oversight. The blockchain technology, a public ledger that records all Bitcoin transactions, mining and proof of work, 
to process to create new Bitcoins and verify transactions, and cryptographic security. This protocol is run by a bunch of computers around the world, and the number of computers that are running this protocol continues to increase forever. It'll keep increasing because it'll become easier and easier to run a node. BlackRock has, let's say, one out of these 20,299 nodes. These are only nodes that can be reached. There are other nodes that can't be reached. There are a lot of nodes because they are reachable nodes. There are nodes that can't be reached. So I, I, I saw a post from Luke Dash Jr. He's one of the developers of Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core is the protocol that we're talking about here. This is the protocol. So he was saying how there's about 100,000 nodes in total. So what has, to, what has to happen is because the Bitcoin protocol includes the process to create new transact, uh, new Bitcoins, new Bitcoin, because the protocol includes that, all of these nodes have to agree to change that. That's how it works. It doesn't work because BlackRock wants it to change. We're not in the fiat currency system. Just because BlackRock wants to change something, it doesn't mean that they can. They don't have any control over this. It's like saying, oh, um, the U.S. government owns 5% of the, uh, the, world's the, the Earth's land, and it can change the rules of gravity. No, it can't. That, that's not how the world works. Bitcoin is a hard-coded protocol that nobody can change unless the majority agree. The majority won't agree to having their own Bitcoin debased. That would be stupid. Okay, now take now let's take a look at all the countries that have Bitcoin or are proposing some kind of strategic Bitcoin reserve. United States, Russia, China, Japan, El Salvador, Bhutan, Brazil, and the United Kingdom. So all of these countries are planning to buy Bitcoin and own it for the future. Why would they want BlackRock to increase the supply and debase their savings? People don't think logically. They say stupid things. They spread all this fear, uncertainty, and doubt online, and then people fall for it. It's just crazy to me. BlackRock can't change Bitcoin supply. And this part right here that I highlighted, the process to create new Bitcoins and verify transactions, it refers to the Bitcoin supply schedule. So let me show you the supply schedule. This is how Bitcoin is produced over time. So over time, from January 3rd, 2009 to November 28th, 2012, every 10 minutes, 50 Bitcoin were produced. And these Bitcoin were paid to people who ran computers and secured the Bitcoin network. So every 10 minutes, 50 Bitcoin were produced. Then from November, 12th, uh, November 28th, 2012 to July 9th, 2016, at block 210,000, this block subsidy, the supply of Bitcoin decreased by 50%. So it went from 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes to 25 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. It went from taking 12 seconds to produce a Bitcoin to 24 seconds. At the first time, the, the first block or the first epoch here, five coins were being produced every 10 minutes or every, every minute. And in the second epoch, so these are called epochs, in the second epoch, 2.5 coins were produced every minute. Then in the third epoch, so from July 9th, 2016 to May 11th, 2012, or 2020, at block 420,000, the block subsidy decreased by 50% again. So it went from 25 to 12.5 every 10 minutes. And of course, we can see here coins per minute decreased. 1.25 coins were created every 10 minutes, or every minute, 48 seconds per coin. This is something that nobody can change. Nobody can change the rules of the network. Nobody can make it so that the block subsidy suddenly increases. Based on this block subsidy, based on 50 coins for 210,000 blocks, 25 coins for another 210,000, 12.5, and so on, we can see here, if we go to the total supply column, column F, and we scroll all the way down, the total supply of Bitcoin, the maximum supply of Bitcoin will only ever be 20,999,999 Bitcoin. And then on top of that, there will be fractions of Bitcoin. So 990. Uh, sorry, 97,755,530 Satoshis. So almost another Bitcoin. There's only ever going to be almost 21 million Bitcoin. And we can see here, so the block subsidy keeps decreasing, keeps decreasing. At one point in 2032, less than one Bitcoin is going to be produced every 10 minutes. In 2044, 
less than 0.1 Bitcoin is going to be produced every 10 minutes. And then in 2060, less than 0.01 Bitcoin will be produced every 10 minutes. And over time, this is going to continue to decrease until there's no Bitcoin being produced ever again. All of these computers that we see here, 20,299 nodes. In total, there's something like 100,000 nodes, like I said. All of these computers are running the Bitcoin protocol and ensuring that this supply schedule is met, that nobody's trying to break the rules, nobody's trying to go around and give themselves free Bitcoin. These computers are ensuring that they don't get screwed over. That's the point of Bitcoin. People think that, oh, just because you have one computer out of 20,000, you have no power over the network. Of course you do. If you run Bitcoin Core and the world wants to use BTC, then you can confirm that Bitcoin Core's protocol is being followed. And the last thing I want to show you here is the mempool. So we can see here on the mempool, we can see every single transaction that's ever happened. If we go to block one, we can see here that the block subsidy was 50 Bitcoin. So 5 billion Satoshis, that's 50 Bitcoin. Each Bitcoin is 100 million Satoshis. So we can see here, the first block gave a reward of 5 billion Satoshis. That's the total amount that went to this address right here. We can see here at this, at this time that five, uh, 50 Bitcoin, 5 billion Satoshis was worth nothing. Nobody cared about it. Nobody thought it was valuable. We can see here at block 210,000, the supply schedule changed. So in block 20, 209,999, there were 50 Bitcoin given out as a block subsidy. In block 210,000, there were 25. So if we, supply, if we subtract total fees from subsidy and fees, we get 25. If we go to the next block, again, 25. This follows this exact website. So if we go to, if you go to mempool.space, you'll see that it follows the supply schedule that I had. So if you go back to the supply schedule, pause the video at the supply schedule, and then try to match it with this website. I'll actually go through with you. So we can go for 420,000. Do it for yourself as well. 420,000. There's another gold block. We can see here, the subsidy plus fee was 25 Bitcoin. The very next block, it was 13.076 Bitcoin. And then if we go to 630,000, the amount of Bitcoin produced was 6.25, exactly matching the Bitcoin supply schedule. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. People have known that this is how it's going to work. Since the beginning of when the Bitcoin protocol was released, we know for a fact that after 2140, there will be no more Bitcoin being produced. Nobody can change this. Nobody can stop this. Nobody who understands Bitcoin will waste their energy and their resources trying to change this. That's BlackRock. BlackRock probably understands Bitcoin better than 99% of people on Twitter. So if you think BlackRock is going to try to change the Bitcoin protocol by changing the supply, then you're, you're out of your mind. You have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe they might do, uh, do other things. Maybe they'll uh, make it so that, I don't know what, I don't know what they could do. What, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll change it in another way, but they're not going to change the supply because it will directly negatively impact them. So why would they change the supply? Okay. I think that's it. I think that, uh, that I, I went on long enough with my rant on that. When you see any kind of posts on Twitter, on social media, on YouTube, anywhere, telling you that somebody can increase the supply, some other coin is going to take over like XRP, Nano, Ethereum. When you see people talking about that, make sure that you look at the incentives. Most people aren't posting comments trying to help you. They're either scared themselves or they're excited about something. So think before you make your decisions. Don't sell your Bitcoin because you saw some random guy on Twitter freaking out about how BlackRock is going to increase the supply. Think of the consequences before you take any of these actions.